Good day, students. You are welcome to another lecture video on practical biochemistry. Today, we are going to be carrying out um, our practicals on quantitative estimation of amino acids and proteins by formal titration. Introduction. Um, amino acids are, are the monomeric units that made of uh, the complex structure of proteins. And there are 20 common amino acids that are found in proteins. And these amino acids, they have amino group and carboxylic acid functional group attached to them. So this is the representation of uh, amino acids whereby we have the Carbon here is attached to four different groups. Uh, we have the carboxylic acid functional group, the amino functional group, hydrogen, and the side chain. For each amino acid, uh, the side chain, which is the R group, is different. So um, glycine has a side chain of H. So glycine is the most simplest amino acid, and it is a chiral amino acid. It does not have chiral center. And when we say chiral center, we mean a carbon that is attached to four different substituent groups. So as in the case of amino acid, this chiral carbon is uh, attached to four different groups. You can see hydrogen here, carboxylic acid functional group here, and amino, acid, uh, amino group uh, functional group here, and also the side chain. So for glycine, here is H, so we have H here and H here. That is what makes glycine to be a chiral. For alanine, for instance, it is CH3. So alanine, this carbon is um, is chiral center. So um, when we talk about mono amino monocarboxylic amino acids, there are those uh, amino acids that have uh, one carboxylic acid functional group and also one amino uh, functional group. So when this monoamino, monocarboxylic amino acid is dissolved in water, it has a pH of, uh, of seven, okay? And if an acid is added, uh, if an acid is added to the solution, it means you are adding a proton, and this proton is being added to the COO negative here, the carboxylic acid functional group here, and the pKa about two, okay? So, and if you add uh, sodium hydroxide, which is a, an alkali, it means a proton is indirectly being removed from the amino group, pKa of about 12. So there are no useful indicators for these uh, ranges, but titrations can be carried out using a pH meter to monitor uh, pH changes. In this way, amino acid can be uh, estimated, uh, quantitatively, okay? So, and if you look at it, we are going to use reagents uh, that we are going to list them uh, in a short while. And, and if we add addition, uh, if we add formaldehyde to this uh, solution, it means uh, we are reacting the uncharged amino group, okay? We are reacting the uncharged amino group to form additional compounds. And in addition, when we add sodium hydroxide, it means, you know, you remember we are removing a uh, proton from the amino group, which is PK of about 12. So an addition of formaldehyde to the amino acid, it reacts with the uncharged amino group to form addition compounds. And this is the addition compound that is um, forming. If you have the amino group and this amino group from the amino acid is reacting with the uh, formaldehyde to form this uh, addition, additional uh, compound or addition compound. So points to remember here is that when you add formaldehyde, it shifts the pKa of the amino group to a lower value, making the uh, solution of the amino acid a stronger acid. And the group that is now formed, the additional, product, the additional uh, product that is formed can now be titrated with sodium hydroxide, 
using phenolphthalein as indicator. So the same procedure can be used to follow enzyme hydrolysis of proteins. And when um, this formaldehyde that we are going to use is already neutralized with sodium hydroxide. And the, the reason why sodium hydroxide is added to the formaldehyde is to remove traces of free formic acid. So when we add formaldehyde to the solution of the amino acid, it means we are making this, that solution of the amino acid a stronger acid because the, the PKA of the amino group is, is being shifted to a lower value. So when that's happening, it means the group can be titrated with sodium, hydro, uh, with sodium hydroxide using phenolphthalein as indicator. And why do we add formaldehyde? Why do we add um, sodium hydroxide to the formaldehyde? It's, it's used to remove traces of free formic acid. So please, you should take note of this. Uh, important points. So now the reagent we are going to use, we have 40% formaldehyde. This formaldehyde is already neutralized with sodium hydroxide. We have standard sodium hydroxide, which is 0 0.1 molar concentration. When we say standard solution, is a solution that is uh, of non-concentration. So we have our standard sodium hydroxide as 0 0.1 molar. And amino acid we are going to use for dehydration is glycine, and we have phenolphthalein uh, indicator. Now let's look at the procedure. In the procedure, we are going to have a conical flux in which we will be prepared 12.5 mL of the amino acid. We are going to prepare 12.5 mL of glycine and we are going to put it inside our conical flux. And after that, we add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. And after that, we are going to uh, neutralize very carefully with few drops of sodium hydroxide and this sodium hydroxide is going to be what? Inside our burette. It's our standard solution. It's going to be inside burette. So we titrate with the standard sodium hydroxide uh, until we have a faintest pink permanent, permanent color. So after we detect that faintest pink permanent color, we are going to add 15 mL of neutralized formaldehyde. So we are going to measure 15 mL. With, we are going to measure 15 mL using uh, measuring cylinder of our what neutralized formaldehyde. Then we are going to add it, okay? We are going to add it to our, uh, this solution now that turns uh, pink, okay? So we are going to add it on top of that solution inside our conical flask. So by so doing, we are going to what, uh, swell to mix them very well. Then we check our burette reading and continue the titration until we have a faint, permanent pink color. And after we have that, we are going to record our final burette reading and we'll repeat the experiments two or three times depending on the availability of resources. So uh, here, so let me summarize what we are going to do here. Here you have a conical flask that you are going to prepare 12.5 mils of the amino acid into the conical flask. After that, you add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator, then you shake gently then you now have your sodium hydroxide, which is our standard solution inside burette. Now we, on, we open our burette very carefully and we add the drops of the uh, sodium hydroxide inside our conical flask, which contain the uh, amino acid. Now, until we have paint, paint, paintest pink permanent color, that's when we stop the titration. Then after we stop the titration, we are going to now measure 15 mL of neutralized formaldehyde and in using measuring cylinder, and we add it to our uh, resulting solution in the conical flask. Remember what you titrated? Now you add it inside, then you mix. Then you check your burette reading to see at which point you stop and at which point you are going to continue. Now you continue the titration until you have paint pink permanent color. Then you record your burette reading and you have your tighter value. You repeat that three times or two times and you uh, take your average data value. So now the result, this is what you are going to get. Now you remember you have before addition of neutralized formaldehyde, you have carried out titration using only the amino acid and you are two drops of the phenolphthalein. So what we have here, you tabulate it. We have two readings here. We have our burette readings, first and second. And we have our final volume, and this is our initial volume. We started with zero, zero, and we have our final volume for the first before we add neutralized formaldehyde. 
we have 0 0.8 for the first reason and 0 0.9 mils for the second reading. So volume of sodium hydroxide used, we have 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 for the first reading and the second reading respectively. Then we take our average tighter value. We now sum these two values, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.9 divided by two, and we arrive at 0 0.8 mils. So this is 0 0.85 mils. This is our average tighter value before we add neutralized formaldehyde. So after you remember this first reading, when you do this first reading before you add formaldehyde, this is what you get after, addition, assuming this is what you get after uh, the few drops of the sodium hydroxide and you have pink, says pink, pink permanent color. This is your conical flask one, okay. So you have taken note of where you started titration from the burette so that you know the exactly vol exact volume of the sodium hydroxide you use. So after that, you are going to now uh, document these readings. Now for this same test to this uh, this same test uh, same conical flask, you are going to now add um, phenolphthalein. Uh, you are going to add neutralized 15 mils of what neutralized formaldehyde. Then you continue the iteration. Then and at the end of the day, you have your uh, your what fentanyl pink uh, permanent color. So after that, you carry at the circle reading, and which the circle reading is what you are having in this case 0 0.9 mils. Few drops of that 0 0.9 mils was able to neutralize your amino acid. So you now continue the iteration, and you have now this is now your table after addition of neutralized formal the height, okay? Now, when you have already taken uh, your first readings, second reading, now you now take the average theta value before addition of formaldehyde. And now after addition of formaldehyde, you added 15 mils, you remember, to each of the conical flask. You continue the titration. So after addition of formaldehyde, you have your final volume, uh, volume of sodium hydroxide used here as 7.80, as in this case. And the second region, you have 7.50 mils, as in, uh, uh, in, in our own case here. So you are now take the average data value, you sum these two, and you divide by two, okay? And you arrive at 7.65. So now you continue and what comes after that is you are going to carry out some calculations. And the first question here says, calculate the molarity of the amino acid from your titration, taking note of the PKA, which will be given. And question two says, one mole of the amino acid contain uh, 14 grams of amino nitrogen. What is the concentration of the amino nitrogen in grams per liter? Question three says, if the amino acid was taken from an old bottle whose content were clearly contaminated with sawdust, dead insect, and dust, and exactly 10 grams was way out to prepare one liter of the solution. What is the purity of the amino acid? So these are the three questions you are going to uh, answer. Now let's quickly look at the solution. Now for question one, we are going to use um, CAVA is equals to CBVV, okay? And our molarity is CA is one what we are looking for. And the concentration of the base, you remember, the concentration molarity of the base was given as 0 0.1 molar, this is given, okay? And the volume of the acid now is going to be what? 12.5 mils pro plus 15 mils. You remember you weigh out 12.5 mils of the amino acid, and after the first titration, you added 15 mils of the neutralized formal formaldehyde, right? So these volumes, you sum them up, that is your volume of the acid, which is now 27.5 mils. Now, you have your volume of the base now to be 0 0.85 mils. That is the uh, volume of the standard sodium hydroxide used before you add formaldehyde, and also the volume of the standard sodium hydroxide used uh, after addition of formaldehyde. That is so the average data value of the two average data values you've gotten. You sum them up, and you have 8.5 mils as your volume of the base. Now, using the same formula, you make see the subject of formula, and when you multiply, 0 0.1 times 8.5 divided by 27.5, you arrive at 0 0.031 molar. So this is the molarity of the amino acid. And when you do that, you have calculated and you answered the first question. Now the second question says, um, you are going to um, calculate the, uh, in grams per liter, 
the concentration of the amino uh, nitrogen. So you remember one mole of the amino acid contains 14 grams of amino nitrogen. So these moles that you have gotten now, 0 0.031 moles will give you X. Now X will be equals to 0 0.031 molar times 14 over one, which is now 0 0.434 grams per liter. Now, and the molarity is equals to mass concentration divided by molar mass, so that your mass concentration will be equals to molarity times the molar mass. Now, 0 0.031 as you are what molarity multiplied by the molar mass, then this is the molar mass of glycine. Your amino acid is glycine, so molar mass of glycine is 75 grams per mole, and you arrive at what? 2.325 uh, 2 grams per liter. Okay. Now, for the third question, you are going to calculate the uh, percentage uh, uh, purity. Okay. You are going to what? Uh, calculate the percentage purity of the amino acid. So, mass of the impure amino acid that was weighed from that oil bottle, it's 10 grams per liter, and mass of the impure is the now uh, just calculated from question two, which is what 2.325 grams per liter that you obtain. Okay, so this is what you are going to use as your mass of pure. So now percentage purity will be mass of pure over mass of impure multiplied by 100. Now you have mass of pure 2.325 grams per liter divided by 10 grams per liter times 100, and you arrive at 23.25 percent. So this is the percentage purity of the amino acid. When you do that, you are good to go and you are uh, actually done with the calculations and also with the experiment. So this brings us to the end of the lecture. Thank you for watching. And if you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe by uh, touching the button that says subscribe and also you on notification so that our next videos will be immediately notified to you when we upload them. Thank you. See you next.